Hi, this is Paul Ingram of SaveYourself.ca, a website of sensible science-based advice for common aches, pains, and injuries. This video is one in a series about runner's knee myths and treatment mistakes. The fourth myth of IT bands and iliotibial band syndrome is that it's all in the hips. This is a new fad. It only goes back a few years. In 2009, Runner's World magazine did a good piece on debunking conventional wisdom, and they asked for my opinion and interviewed me on the topic of stretching. So you see here it says on the left, no stretching, which is what I said in the third IT band myths video. Ironically, on the right, they're promoting a new myth, all in the hips, three simple secrets to preventing injuries. Basically, the idea here is that hip health, particularly strength, is key to treating and preventing IT band syndrome and a bunch of other running and overuse injuries below the waist. The muscles that we're mostly talking about are the gluteus medius and minimus buried on the side of the hip. The gluteus medius here, you can see just poking out from underneath the glute max. And if you go one layer deeper, you find the gluteus minimus, which is almost identical. Both of them are shaped pretty much exactly like a slice of pizza converging on the greater trochanter on the side of the hip. These are stabilizing muscles, and if you didn't have them at all, you could barely keep your hips in line as you walked. You'd have a crazy hip swinging gait. And the idea is that if they're too weak, your hips swing too much and you have inferior biomechanics and that makes you vulnerable to injury. If we return to the issue of runner's world that I mentioned right at the beginning, in that issue, Dr. Reed Ferber, a researcher who has promoted the idea that hip weakness is significant to runners, he says this, inadequate hip muscle stabilization is a top cause of injury in runners. A top cause, that's a really confident statement. Some would say overconfident. I don't think that runners can get excited about this yet. In fact, I think that we shouldn't. It's an interesting subject, and the theory is not without merit or promise. It is worth exploring and keeping tabs on it. The problem is not so much that it's definitely wrong as that the theory is weak and unstable, like the hips, maybe. By an amazing coincidence, virtually the only direct research evidence on this topic was produced by Dr. Ferber and his team at the University of Calgary around 2007. Uh, I read that paper with great interest and I was not persuaded. The evidence is intriguing and suggestive and I hope that there will be much more in the future to help settle the question. But for now, this is an unproven pet theory. It's not yet ready for prime time. I've also looked at all possible relevant evidence before that and since, and there's really still just nothing convincing. There's hardly any evidence at all before Ferber, and the evidence that's been published since then is just simply not all that impressive. If weak hips hasn't been proven, not even close, then it becomes just another one true risk factor that has been proposed, one of a great many over the years. And none of them have ever been clearly established as an actual problem for runners. So weak hips really seems like it's just like pronation. Pronation is when the foot rolls excessively inwards. And for many years, maybe decades, it was considered to be a prime suspect as a root cause of injuries in runners. But it's being disproven, and in fact, Dr. Ferber himself dismisses it quite decisively in his paper on hip weakness. Dr. Ferber's quote in Runner's World was a wild-eyed overstatement. He does not actually have adequate evidence for that opinion. Yet, he chose to promote it without a sign of humility or caution in the world's most widely read running magazine, and he's done the same in many others since. If Runner's World gave me a chance to comment on this topic, my quote would be, not so fast. This has been just one of several alarmingly common myths about IT band syndrome. Search YouTube for the other myths in this series, or you can learn pretty much everything there is to know about IT band syndrome on saveyourself.ca slash ITBS. This is Paul Ingram. Good luck with your knees.